This video series will teach you in detail how to program in presentation by building a real-world experiment step by step. This tutorial will describe the use of variables in programming. In this tutorial, we will run very basic programs. If you do not already know how to run a presentation scenario, we recommend that you watch the running and experiment tutorial video to help get started. Remember that in this introduction to programming series, we are using version 17.1 or later of presentation. Before continuing with this series, we recommend that you upgrade to version 17.1 or later. Versioning is independent of licensing and you may have multiple versions of presentation installed on the same machine. In this tutorial, we will be printing information to the terminal rather than using the full screen to display items as you might do in a typical experiment. We will be running our scenarios from the editor tab, which you will likely do as you write scenarios in the future. The terminal is part of the status window. It may not be showing before you run a scenario from the editor tab, but you can toggle it by pressing Ctrl T or clicking the icon here. The status window will display while a scenario is run. First we will print a value to the terminal. For now, just take it as given that the way to print to the terminal is to place a data value between the parentheses in a statement like this. We will go over what types of information you can print to the terminal during this tutorial. We will discuss in a later tutorial exactly how this statement works in detail. Now we will run this scenario by pressing F5. You can also run the scenario by clicking on the green arrow icon. After running the program, we can look at the terminal window and see that Hello World appears there without quotation marks. Presentation can manipulate many different types of data. Some can very, be very complex, such as 3D models or auditory waveforms. However, for right now, we will discuss simple types of data, which are called basic types. Basic types are very important in programming the logic of your experiment. In this simple program, we see a data value of one of the basic types called a string. A string contains arbitrary text of any length. To enter a string value into a program, type the text between double quotation marks. The string value will be the text inside, not including the quotation marks. If you don't use quotation marks, you won't get a string value. If you try to run this scenario, presentation will display errors in your program because we did not include quotation marks. A string may contain multiple lines, but you may not enter those directly into your program as separate lines. Instead, you must use the combination backslash n. This represents a special new line character, rather than the two characters backslash and n. The backslash character can be used in other combinations that have meanings, such as for putting double quotation marks inside a string. If we didn't use the special character, our quotation marks would be treated as the end of the string. See the presentation documentation for inf more information about other special characters in string values. String data may be any length, including no length at all, which you can enter by placing nothing between the quotation marks. This still creates a valid string value, one with no characters in it, which we call an empty string. Another basic type is an integer, a number with no decimal part. In presentation, this type is called int. Ints can be positive, negative, or zero. Anywhere in your program that a value can go, you can instead put a calculation. When you're working with numbers, presentation supports all the usual mathematical operations which you can enter just as you might expect. You can also see from this example that calculations which only involve integers will always produce an integer result. This can be particularly important when dividing integers because remainders are discarded. This means that, for example, 10 divided by 3 yields 3. When you need to use floating point numbers, numbers that may have a decimal part, presentation provides the basic data type double. Although a double value with no decimal part is mathematically speaking identical to an integer, presentation stores and treats these two types differently. In this program, the decimal point in 3.0 is what makes that 3 a double value and not an int value. The rule is, if there's a decimal point, you get a double. For double values, you're also required to have a digit before the decimal part, even if it's 0. Doubles and ints are different types, however, because every int value can be represented as a double value, presentation allows you to use an int anywhere in a program a double is required. Internally, presentation will convert the int value to a double value for you. Therefore, any mathematical operation that mixes int values and double values will result in a double. In this example, 4 plus 6 results in the int value 10. 
However, when dividing 10 by the double value 3.0, presentation first converts 10 to a double and performs double division so that the result is 3.333 rather than the 3 that would result from integer division. The final basic type that we will discuss in detail is called bool, which is short for boolean. A bool has only two possible values, true or false. You can enter the two bool values directly by typing true and false without the quotation marks. Bools can be used in a conditional, which we will discuss later. The general idea is that we might want to execute some code if a condition is true, and other code if the condition is false. For example, you might want the program to follow one course of action if a subject responds correctly to some stimulus, and another if they don't. In most cases where a bool value is used, it is generated from a comparison operation. Here we perform the comparison 10 is less than or equal to 5, which is false, so the value false is printed to the terminal. Presentation provides multiple com comparison operators written as equal sign equal sign is equal to, exclamation mark equal sign is not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, ampersand ampersand and or. These last two operators combine two ball values together. In the case of ampersand ampersand, the values on both sides need to be true for the result to be true. In the first line, the left side is true because 5 is greater than 3, but the right side is false because 1, exclamation mark, equal sign 1 is false. So this presents false to the terminal. In the case of or, only one of the values needs to be true for the result to be true. So it doesn't matter that the second half is false, and this prints true to the terminal. In order to make a useful program, we need some ways to store data values and then use or change the values stored in those locations. For this, we use something called a variable. We can create several variables like this. A variable is a chunk of computer memory that presentation reserves to store a particular type of data. You can think of variables as boxes that hold data. Each variable has a name, which is like a label that identifies each box. If we look at the four statements that created our variables, we see that they begin with the name of the data type that the variable can hold. In this case, int, double, string, and bool. This type of statement which creates a variable is called a variable declaration, or declaring a variable. Next comes the name of each variable. Variable names be, may be any sequence of letters, numbers, and underscores, beginning with a letter. In this case, our variables are named count, accuracy, caption, and done. After the variable name comes an equal sign, followed by any value of that type, or any calculation that yields such a value. We call giving a value for the variable in the declaration initializing the variable. The semicolons, which you've also seen in the previous examples, are required to separate one statement from the next. When we want to access the value stored in a variable, we can simply use the name of the variable in our program. For example, we can print out the values of our variables to the terminal by using the variable name in our terminal statement instead of typing in an explicit value. When the variable name count appears here in the program, presentation will look up the current value contained in the count box and use that. After we run, we see in the terminal the values contained in our four variables. Note that all variables have a defined type and can only store values of that type. If you try to initialize a variable with a value of the wrong type, you will get an error. In this example, we initialize the double variable accuracy with a string. However, because ints can be used anywhere where a double is required, it's okay to initialize a double variable with an int value, as we do here when initializing the double variable accuracy with the int value 1. It will be converted to a double value and then stored in the variable. It is possible to declare variables without initializing them by leaving off the initialization part. The question is, what will the initial values in the variables be? In this case, presentation has rules for the initial values of variables depending on the type. Int variables will have initial value 0, double variables will be 0, 
point zero, string variables will be the empty string, no text, and bool variables will be false. If the default values happen to be what you want, it's possible to leave off the initialization. For example, not initializing the variable done would not change the program from the previous version with initializations when we initialize to false. However, we strongly recommend that you always initialize your variables of type int, double, and bool for two reasons. First, it's good programming practice to be explicit about what the initial value should be. It makes your program easier to read for yourself and others. They might wonder, did you really intend to use the default initial value, or did you just forget to initialize the variable? Secondly, and more importantly, older versions of presentation did not initialize int, double, and bool variables to any particular value. The initial values could be anything, even changing each time you run the scenario. If your scenarios run on older versions of presentation, it will silently have different behavior from what you intended. There are two other basic types in presentation called RGB underscore color, which contains color values, and a vector, which contains coordinates in 3D space. And there may be others added in the future. See the presentation documentation for examples of handling values of these types.